it's me hello my name is Carrie <laughs> welcome to this channel I hate intros more than anything else in the world hello let's get this started I was not sure what to make um, this week and I had an idea for a video and then I wasn't sure about it I went back and forth and I decided to just record and see what comes from it so this morning I finished a book I started yesterday um, which was odd and I'll tell you about it in a second but mainly the reason why I'm struggling is twofold number one um, I have a couple book ideas book ideas a couple video ideas but that requires me to read and review a couple more books so I like actually need I just simply don't have time to read those books for you um, so I do have video ideas and they're also I feel like I started because they're so fun to make I feel like I kind of dug myself into this hole of reviewing kind of funny fantasy books I don't know why there's so much dust flying around um, but yeah I, I saw that my channel was becoming really just like funny fantasy not awesome book reviews um, and that's never what I really wanted so my my video ideas are going to be kind of what I used to make in the past a little more listical um, and branching out from just kind of eh fantasy which is what like I feel like my monthly wrap-ups I tend to have mostly fantasy but like a mix of genres in my recommendations to you um, but as far as my not monthly wrap-up all the other videos have been heavily that and they're just fun to make and I love sharing that with you and reading your comments so I don't mind it but I just don't want to dig myself into put myself in a little corner you know so yeah book ideas have them don't have time to actually read the books and then the second reason is I'm in a reading slump and one of those reading slumps where I'm still reading but I'm just not enjoying anything that I read. I DNF'd a book yesterday, I started a book yesterday that I finished this morning and I didn't like it. It's one of those reading slumps where I, I feel like I'm reading the books wrong because I'm like why aren't these hitting, you know? And I hate that. Um, so I feel like every reader does. Today I am embarking, where is my lunch? After I eat my samgak kimbap. I will be embarking on a journey with you. Did I just spend the last two or three minutes saying I didn't want to back myself into a fantasy corner? Yeah, I'm a hypocrite. I'm a morally gray character, my friends. We're gonna start reading. Where is it? Heh. Mm. Whoa, we are going. Oh, oh, damn, it's here. Okay, my pre order just came in. So, cool. Um, I'm going to be reading The Serpent. And the Wings of Night. I saw, I've seen this so many times in the Kindle store saying I'd really like it and I'm just sort of tired of the Kindle Unlimited, no offense, but like the Kindle Unlimited fantasy romance books. They all are very similar to me. I haven't really been hit by one other than the first three books of the Air Awakens series, but I had just recently a bunch of people commenting about this book and then the grain of rice that tipped the scale. I have a good friend who doesn't read fantasy that often she's a romance girly and she posted about it like many many times on her story, Susan I'm calling you out, um, about how much she ate this up and I think she even went and bought the physical book. I mean she's committed and I was like if Susan was brought in by this book. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if this breaks my reading slump where I've been reading and not feeling anything. The second book, I believe it's a series, so it's unfinished, and yes, I'm gonna do this to myself. This is how desperate I am. It's an unfinished series, but the second book just came out about one hour ago. Yeah, I'm gonna start reading this after lunch, and I'll take you along for the ride. Um, if you hear my air conditioner in the background, Guys, I can't turn it off. I turned it off for like my last couple videos while I was filming. Not today. Hope you enjoyed that little mini moody reading vlog. I read, oh, um, sidebar. I read Modern Divination, which was recommended to me by a few of you guys. And that was one of the books that I felt like I was reading incorrectly because there were so many things that confused me. Like 
even just the world building, there wasn't world building. It involves a girl who is a witch. Throughout the plot, we learn that there is someone trying to kill witches, but like, we don't understand the world whatsoever. So like, are witches in hiding? Are witches rare? It doesn't seem like it. But why is there someone only trying to kill this one witch who doesn't even have like crazy powers? It's just nothing was explained and not even like in a ooh mysterious way in just like a kind of poor world building way. I might continue it but I don't even know how it's it's a series and I don't even know how it's gonna continue because I don't even know like how it ended. I feel like she just kind of wanted to write academic rivals to lovers romance and didn't know how to build a plot around that. It just had so many weird things, like even there, there was a scene, this happened multiple times, but when it really hit me, there was a scene where they're talking in the bathroom, he's brushing his teeth, and he like, he spits out his toothpaste, and then two sentences later, they're like in another part of the room, like just spatially. I, it, I was so confused, so I'm going from that to hopefully a better book, I don't know. Um, but I'm really hungry, so I'm going to eat this in like a couple bites, so I'm not gonna show you on camera because that's weird. Let's read, shall we? I think there are vampires in this. If I made that up, I'm sorry, but I'm really hoping there are vampires in this. Let's go! First, a Goodreads summary read-along. And <clears throat> I glimpsed the first two words. I was right. There are vampires. Human or vampire, the rules of survival are the same. Never trust never yield and always always guard your heart the adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king oria carved her place in a world designed to kill her her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the kejari a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself but winning won't be easy amongst the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. Okay, wait, there are vampire houses I'm in. Something about like, oh, I don't, oh, okay, ready? To survive, Oriya is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Everything about rain? Oh, they're all words I can't pronounce. Everything about rain is dangerous. He's a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Araya most of all this is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. But, there, but there's no room for compassion in the Kajari. War for the House of Night brews, shattering everything that Araya thought she knew about her home. And Ray may understand her more than anyone, but their blossoming attraction could be her downfall in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. The Serpent and the Wings of Night is the first book in a new series of heart-wrenching romance, dark magic, and bloodthirsty intrigue. Per- You were going so strong. Perfect for fans of From Blood and Ash and A Court of Thorns and Roses. 4.52 stars, 45K ratings. Let's do it, man. Let's break this curse. Off I go. Not me thinking of a certain three winged men. Like there's only winged men who travel in threes. There's only one trio in the world. Yeah, I make my life so wet. So we meet the king who is going to be her adopted father and they're basically like, yeah, he's not really strong. He's not really that smart. He's not really that brave. Okay, I'm into this so far, actually. I thought the prologue was really good. It turns out that the our main girl is the serpent because they find her in a destroyed village. Um, and the vampires are like trying to get at her and she just keeps biting their hands. And so the king takes her home and all the other vampire soldiers are questioning this decision to take this cute little girl home. And the prologue ends with, after all, Vampires know better than anyone how important it is to protect their hearts, and love, understand, is sharper than any stake. Mm. Part one, dusk. So our girl is a vampire hunter. Like obviously vampires aren't all nice like the king was to her, so they actually do still eat humans and she goes and 
beats them to the punch. I don't know, the way that she's written so far, I, I'm i enjoying her as a female lead. <laughs> Hi, I've migrated to the couch. Um, I am on page 80. I am allegedly 14% of the way through. I'm on chapter eight. I'm liking this so far. Um, I always appreciate when the female protagonist is a little bit unhinged and bloodthirsty and there's a reason why she's so sharp. I guess. Um, and the world building and her backstory are explained really simply and quickly. We're introduced to characters at a pace that makes sense. It's like a vampire Hunger Games kind of thing. Um, and I'm digging it so far. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi there. 22% update. I've only read 40 more pages <laughs> since my last update. Okay, so the only reason that I'm going to be comparing it so directly to Aquatar is because that's how it was marketed. So if anyone is like, why do you keep comparing it? Meh. Because we immediately start off, and no spoilers here, because we immediately start off with these like trials and battles and all of these things, it feels very much like the ending um, of A Court of Thorns and Roses where we have all of these trials. The key difference though is that our main girl, Oriya, is really tough, really self-sufficient. She can solve riddles really quickly. She's been trained for this. I really appreciated that from the get-go. And then also when we have met who we know from the summary is going to be our rival potential ally they're on kind of equal footing and oraya knows what's up like in aquatar a lot of times the female leads whether it's pharaoh whether it's nesta are in the dark about a lot of things not always but a lot of the time in this she's studied this like she also knows everything um, so they're, even though they're rivals and even though they still have that kind of tension, especially there's one particular scene that feels very much like when a particular character comes to Feyre and is like, you're hurt, let's make a deal kind of thing. There's a scene very similar to that, but Oriah has so much bite to her. We actually think that she doesn't need this guy. Yeah, I'm just overall into it. And and my issue with the books that I had been reading previously was that I had never gotten to a point where I no longer saw the words on the page. And with this, like in the battle scenes, it's been action, 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 like 22%. It's been mostly action and like battle scenes and stuff like that. It's been really visual for me, which is great like i can picture where they are very clearly um which is something i was missing like i said from previous books so cool and we just met who i think is gonna be a quirky best friend and i love those so um okay i'm enjoying this yay <laughs> okay yeah i love this quirky friendship i love it <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're placed precariously on a candle and a vase of roses. How romantic. I am only 28% of the way through. I kind of got distracted, um, but it's, like I said, still good so far. I am actually going to have dinner and I don't like to read and eat at the same time, especially because this is, I'm eating a burrito. Um, so I am actually going to be watching the fifth episode of Lockwood and Co. This was a Netflix show that was recommended to me by a bunch of you guys and I had gotten it confused with Lock and Key. I feel like they came out at the same time and they're both, I believe, both based on books. I know Lockwood is. I think I watched, I started Lock and Key and that felt very much geared towards a much younger audience. Um, and with books, I can read books for younger audiences, but TV shows, but TV shows for some reason, hit different but with Lockwood and Co it's actually so good it is based off of books it is for a young adult audience but it's really good and clever and it's about ghosts and this future or not future but there's like the problem where apparently like ghosts come back you know the younger you are the more gifted you are with communicating or like sensing ghosts so it's up to kids basically 
to go to usually like haunted houses or like haunted places and it's like Ghostbusters, right? They need to dispose of the ghosts. I thought that it was done so well. I think that um, I was actually talking with a friend about this, that like in books, I can read about anything and like whatever, but in movies and TV, things can get cheesy really quickly, just depending on dialogue, special effects. But this is not cheesy at all. Like it's, I mean, it's a little cheesy. I think it's done really well. And I actually had to stop myself from continuing. I stopped right in the middle of the season. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eat my burrito. I'm gonna watch British Ghostbusters, British baby Ghostbusters. That's exactly what it is so okay um and then i'm gonna get back into reading this is great kurt has our one of um our mutual friends is getting married and in korea you tend to have like a big dinner with your friends and personally hand out the wedding invitations so his whole crew because they all work together all the guys are getting together to receive wedding invitations. It's so cute. So um, I'm on my own for tonight and loving it. <laughs> so yeah, my burrito should be here any moment. Let's watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> reading and I have a prediction. I don't know if this is spoilery so you can skip to here I guess if you don't want to hear my prediction but we are at 28%. She just realized that she has a big burst of power and I think the alleged human camp that she lived in that got destroyed was actually just the Rishan whatever kind, like basically whatever kind of vampire Rain is, I think she's the same kind and we're like blessed by another, mm. yeah, I just wanna say that she's not, oh, but she is human. Okay, never mind. trash my theory. <laughs> I am making a lovely dessert of apples and peanut butter. I don't know if I'm gonna like keep checking in. Honestly, like the books that I have talked about previously, like Crave, Zodiac Academy and stuff like that. Oh my God, hold on. Um, those were books that I wasn't super immersed in. And so I was okay to like constantly interrupt myself and talk to the camera. But honestly, I'm digging this and I don't, come on. Um, and I don't feel like, yes, I have a motion sensor light. And I just don't feel like breaking that concentration. So I think I'm just going to dive in and keep reading tonight. And then I'll update you tomorrow. Does that sound good? I'm almost halfway through. It's like 500 something pages. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, it's 11.30 p.m. My butt hurts because I haven't moved. I just powered through this. Um, I enjoyed it. There was a bit of smut that definitely, I don't, if there's like an entire paragraph describing the penis, count me out. But the rest of it I thought was really good and I think how it ended it ended how I like books to end which is not necessarily a cliffhanger but I'm excited for the next book I don't feel like at 11 30 p.m I need to start the second book right now even though I have it I feel like my reading slump has been lifted from my shoulders so I'll see you tomorrow where I might read the next one I lost my voice somehow I really need to go to sleep um it's not even that late it's just that like i i'm hot like i went through it i battled <laughs> i battled my way through that book um so yeah it was very very action-packed i liked the banter i thought that they spoke like an actual like friendship kind of romance would unlike in other especially in fantasy where they tend to be a little more like formal and then randomly they will have like a weird kind of informal combo this is just like a pretty consistent like the characters are just consistent um and 
speak like humans that are flirting all the time and that's great. So, okay, see you later. Okay, hello. It is <clears throat> the next next day and um, I realized I just wasn't sure how to end this. I think I successfully managed to find a book that I loved reading. I had a lot of fun, I was immersed. I feel good again. I found like I, it's been a while. Um, and now I am on, I'm 100 pages in. I'm 13% of the way through for the second one. I mean, just because of how a story has to go, this isn't my favorite like part of the arc, you know, but I get why this has to happen. So here we are. I still like that the characters are once again, consistent, staying true to who we were introduced to, if that makes sense. So yeah, I had a good time with it. Um, and so I think that this experiment was a little success. Um, I also didn't read at all yesterday. Um, I think that was also a thing of when I went on my solo trip, I was by myself <laughs> for nine days and I read so much. Like unless I was walking around seeing the sights, I was reading and I think maybe I just kind of tired myself out. And, and then when coming home, I thought like, oh, I could just keep up that lifestyle and um i think i just needed to take a little break so i'm not sitting down with a book every single day and that's been helping so yesterday we just kind of wandered around ate a lot of good food kurt played tennis for the first time it was very exciting for him mr russell was in kicking the doors have a cool and we're ready now what we're doing okay so now today i I'm like excited to get back to my book, you know? This was meant to be a 24 hour experiment. It went a little bit longer, but um, I'm happy with the result. And I do recommend if you are like a, a Court of Thorns and Roses girly, would I compare it to? Here's the thing, if you like books that are like, that's my girl, kind of books, you know? Like the, the one of the romantic characters will say, that's my girl. This is your book. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I recommend, I can't recommend the second one yet because I'm only 13% of the way through, but I read a book and fully enjoyed it. So let me know your thoughts if you have read this book. Let me know your thoughts if you have read Modern Divination and let me know books that have been really grabbing you recently because I feel like I kind of just started writing down books I felt like I had to read or that interest me just a little bit. Um, and I think I just need some books that are gonna like slap me in the face, you know? So as always, leave your recommendations down below and thank you for being here on this mini journey with me. I hope you're reading good things and if you're stuck in a reading slump, I feel ya and I hope it ends soon. So, all right. Catch you guys later. Next week, um, I have an in-depth review of a book that like was one that I absolutely thought I read wrong because I was shocked at how bad it was and it's from an author that I love. So look out for that. See you later. Bye.